In today's episode, Anne asks, accessible and inclusive content marketing has garnered more attention than the last couple of years. How have you seen or heard brands address either or both topics? Well, as I record this, it is Pride Month, and then every brand, is, there's puking rainbows. Um, yet, strangely, a lot of them are also donating to politicians that have anti-LGBTQ policies, but... Here's the thing. There isn't as much accessible or an inclusive content as there could be, which is baffling to me as a marketer because the more people you include, the more people who can access stuff, the more people who can buy from you, right? the more people who can give you money and say, hey, I want to buy your products or services. So what are some things that we should all be doing? There's some really easy basics, particularly for accessibility. Um, I was doing a keynote recently um, at the Spark.me conference in Montenegro, and I had PowerPoint up on the screen. And one of the really cool features is real-time captions. Right, So I had one AirPod in my ear. As I'm talking, the captions are appearing beneath my slides. Artificial intelligence, natural language uh, recognition has gotten so good so good now that real-time captions are a reality. Not only are they a reality, they're, they're pretty good. Um, there was an, actually an interesting twist on that talk. I had it being translated into Serbian uh, in real time. So I was speaking, and Serbian words were appearing beneath my slides. Talk about an accessibility thing, right? So not only, because the crowd in Montenegro uh, speaks Montenegro, which, is a, which it, it and Serbian are essentially the identical languages. If you were in that audience and English wasn't your strongest language, and let's be face it, I speak quickly sometimes, um, having the words in your language on screen was inclusive. Right? If you were hard of hearing, right? if you had a hearing disability of some kind um, or other uh, auditory disability, having the words on screen, uh, as I was saying them, is an accessibility thing. Every piece of content we create ideally should have some kind of accessibility hook so that closed captions and stuff are available um, so that uh, content is compliant with screen readers. You know, just, just basic stuff, like alt tags and images, just putting them in emails, making sure that we don't leave those out. That, that is table minimum. And yet a lot of companies don't do it. Partly because... They don't think about it. It's the same reason we have bias in AI, because people don't think to ask the question, how can this data be misused, right? In our case, in the content marketing question, the question is, who are we excluding by releasing it only in this format? Who can't we market to, right? If you are releasing video without closed captions, you are marketing, you are excluding people who need text to consume your content. If you publish um, a podcast, making sure that you have things like show notes available. Again, if you can't hear, podcast is, is kind of a problem. Um, there's so many great AI-based tools now to make accessibility straightforward. Um, Adobe Premiere, I was doing some editing for the Modic conference the other day. And there were six sessions that were in Japanese. I don't speak Japanese, not fluently. I certainly can't write it. But I could choose transcription in Japanese in Adobe Premiere. And it created closed captions. Now, are there misses? Of course, there are inaccuracies. But there are so relatively few... And the benefit of the accessible content is so great that it's a no-brainer to use it. And then when we load those captions, those Japanese captions to YouTube, for example, I could just push one button on YouTube and say, translate to English. And suddenly now, content that was inaccessible to me is accessible to me. I can, I can understand what the speaker is saying, right? Think about... If you don't like watching videos like this, what if you could just read the transcript? Even if it was automated, 
You just read the transcript. Suddenly, you if you read, you can read like up to 500 words a minute. I speak about 150 words a minute. So you could read my content. You can consume it up to three times faster when I provide it in multiple formats. So how should you be doing accessible and inclusive content? Provide it in as many formats as is practical in your workflow. Build accessibility into your workflow. Build inclusivity into your workflow. And ask yourself all the time, but especially for big campaigns, is there anyone that we are excluding that we wouldn't want to because they might buy some stuff from us? Right? Who are, whose money are we not taking by putting out content in a format that's incompatible with a certain part of the population? So, really important question. Who are you excluding? Whose money are you not taking by creating inaccessible or exclusive content? And by the way, it's kind of funny when you think about it. Marketers love to talk about, this is exclusive to you, or this is exclusive. That means you're excluding a whole bunch of people. Right? What if your content that was so exclusive is counter to diversity and inclusivity campaigns that your company's trying to do? Maybe we can retire that term for a little while. Right, maybe we can re retire exclusive for law, especially since most of the time it's not exclusive. Anyway, it's a good question. Thanks for asking. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button.